There is perhaps no one alive today responsible for saving more animals than George Schaller. When you look at George's contributions, it's the top 10 of firsts. The first ecological and behavioral survey of the Serengeti lion, the first surveys of the mountain gorilla, the first ecological survey of the panda, the Tibetan ungulates, it just, it just goes on and on. He did frame the way we think about conservation. He's also worked with tigers, cheetahs, snow leopards, and jaguars, and the prey those animals depend upon for survival. The breadth of his work is astounding. The more conservationists doing field work will tell you that they owe their inspiration to George Schaller than to any other single person. It was his writings on the tiger in the 1960s that inspired me to become a wildlife biologist. George has been my mentor. He's wildlife biology in its walking pure form. His work began as a college student in Alaska, where he was part of the team that helped preserve what would become ANWR, the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. From there, in 1959, Schaller and his wife Kay set up camp in the volcano region near the borders of the Congo, Uganda, and Rwanda. Their mission, to conduct the first study of mountain gorillas. Quickly, he proved that mountain gorillas were not the violent beasts they had been characterized as to that point. I would climb low into a tree and sit on a branch so I could look down on them and record who is touching whom, what are they eating, and so forth. And I was particularly happy when one day a female gorilla came and she climbed up on the branch with me and sat next to me. And we both looked down on the gorilla group. And we didn't look at each other. We sat there and sort of glanced at each other. And then finally she descended again. It was a wonderful experience. I'm sure that his ability to be the first person to really get close to gorillas was because he so sympathized with them. He understood how they felt. The thing about George Schaller is that in every instance, he gives you insights into the animal. You see it as a fellow living creature. His ability to connect with people is really extraordinary. And part of it is in creating empathy with the animals that he's describing. And there's a sociology underneath his work. Animals relate to you and you relate to them. And I think this is essential. You have to look at it a little bit subjectively with emotion, with intuition. Schaller's two-year study of mountain gorillas was the foundation for the conservation work we still see happening today for the species. Diane Fossey would follow in his footsteps, as would many others, to ensure survival of these remarkable animals. After working with tigers and other large cats in the late 1960s, Schaller set upon a study of the lions of the Serengeti. Schaller needed first to discover how lions lived, who hunted and how often, what was the structure of the prides. I learned that a pride consists of related females, that the pride males are only there a few years at most. Then they get thrown out by other males who take over the pride. Then we try to measure how much the predators actually eat. And the predators take probably a about 10% of the animals by weight, which isn't so much. So all that is of important in long-term management of a park. It was a wonderful experience, probably the happiest field time my wife and I had in the field, because we had two young sons at the time as well. My wife taught them school in the field. I started out keeping pets, and it's hard to resist at times. Usually abandoned animals. Uh, this was the cutest little lion cub. The mother obviously didn't have milk, so she dumped it by a kill. And I didn't have the heart to just leave it. We took it home, and it was a wonderful pet for a few months. But we knew we can't keep a grown lion around, so we ended up at the Milwaukee Zoo and he became the father of many cubs there. So that had a happy ending. Schaller's book on the project has become a seminal work on the understanding of lions. 
Schaller has always gone to study animals where there hasn't been much study before. In the early 80s, that led him to China to learn about the giant panda. He and Kay set up camp for what would be home for the next three years. Then came the process of getting to know the panda, understanding their needs and habitat. And as usual with Schaller, he came to name and know several of the animals, including one he named Zen Zen. Well, Zen Zen, using a double name, is a sign of affection in China. And it means precious. And she was an elderly female who we put our camp right in the middle of her home range. And our food in our uh, hut where we were smelled so good. She started visiting. And okay, that's nice once or twice. But then when she chases you out of your own hut to find the food, that's less popular. I go off in the field during the day. I come back, there's a big pile of panda droppings on my bed. Schaller documented the panda's dependence on bamboo and how critical such habitat was to the animal's survival. Then came the step critical to Schaller's global impact. As he has done many times, he took great science on a beautiful animal that people could relate to and drove home to political leaders how absolutely vital it was to protect it. The science is fascinating. I love learning to understand an animal to write its biography. That's one aim, but that's not conservation. What's conservation? It's economics, it's politics, it's culture, it's social life. Schaller's work helped increase the number of panda reserves in China from a dozen to nearly 40. That's more than half of their habitat, and they are prospering there. One reason to study a gorilla or a panda or whatever is that it draws attention. So it becomes a symbol, an icon of that habitat. And if you save the habitat, you save thousands upon thousands of other species of plants and animals that live in that habitat. He has spent much of the last 20 years focused squarely on habitat protection, creating one of the largest reserves in the world upon the Tibetan Plateau nearly 130,000 square miles, about the size of Germany. Think of that, it's just enormous. Yellowstone is, is less than 4,000 square miles. That's only the first step. Now to implement management. So in Tibet, I take out young field biologists to show them what I'm doing, what has to be carried on into the future. And the best way to leave something behind in the country is to train people. And so the knowledge and enthusiasm for protection of this area will spread and spread. And long after you've forgotten, you still have an impact. George Schaller's impact upon conservation is truly generational and immeasurable. He has driven scientific debate, prodded governmental action, spurred the imagination of millions, and set possibilities for our future. He's a naturalist who is also a poet. He brings nature alive to us in a way no one else working today has ever done. There is no other figure in the history of scientific conservation that is like George for having traversed the world and been responsible for saving among the greatest wild places in the world. Hope transcends experience. You've got to retain hope. If you pick a project that you think has a chance of success and fight for it, you can see progress. That is true in every country. So you have to keep fighting.